important that we come out as the world and speak about it. Why I'm saying it is not so new a topic is because it's not the first time again that we're talking about this. It's been constant for the longest of time. It gets, you know, it's taking a new shape. It's getting another face, or I don't know whether this is something that has just been there. It's just that we never spoke about it. And we're talking about domestic violence. Why I'm saying it's taking a new shape is because in most cases you'd hear domestic violence and you think, oh, it's actually a woman being battered. But such is not the case. You realize that even men are being battered back at home. Most of them suffer in silence. And so we want to come out and speak about this. We want to come out and remind you constantly that it's important you speak out. It is important that you know what, you do not die there. If worst has come to the worst, it is much better if you step out and say, well, let's go in peace, take your way, I'll take mine, as opposed to staying in there. And then now we hear stories of Linda is reporting about, you know, one person who killed whoever, and, you know, constantly neighbors would come out to say that such has always been the case. They used to butter each other a lot. But then again, they go to this point where they have killed each other. It should not get to that point. And even as these processes continue within the home setup, the effects of them is nothing that you'd want to be close or be associated with. What does it do to the children? What does it do to you as an individual? Is exactly what we'll be discussing alongside specialists. I call them specialists because they've been handling these matters of family for the longest time I know. They have, you know, gone to school to understand this in their own respective capacities. They are pastors and they talk deeply about these matters and they speak to every other person, the congregants and out there. So it is important that we engage them and they give us views that would be of great importance to us to run away from domestic violence. Dr. Julius and Dr. Jane, good to have you this morning. Hey. I should have started by saying Dr. Jane first, eh? ladies first. <laughs> but all the same, we're happy to have you, Thank you. after quite a while. Yes. Uh, the other time we're talking about raising the boy child. Yes. We're looking at the scenarios that we witnessed today, the murder cases, mm -hmm. I mean, that are uh, conducted by these young tags. We were looking at the kind of unrest and intolerance that we witness in schools. And I, I mean, before we started the conversation, the gentlemen that I had on said, well, like, you know, domestic violence is actually a conversation that you should have because you find that everything that is happening outside, you know, in the lives of these young tats mm. is culminating true. from the animosity that Absolutely. is at home. True, true. Why do you Absolutely. say it is true? I agree. Uh -huh. You mm. see, I think uh, as we, a common saying that says charity begins at home. Yes. I also believe that violence also begins at home. Okay. You will rarely find somebody who is extremely violent, abusive, on the, in, 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 in school, mm -hmm. even in organizations, because we have them, or even in marriages, if they have not, they themselves experienced that kind of a form of a violence. Okay. So if you look deeply backwards in the life of that person who is physically abusive, emotionally abusive or any other way you will find there was something that happened in their home mm -hmm. that caused or triggered some uh, violence in them because domestic violence is not about even the person who is being violated okay if you look at it it begins with a person who has issues with himself or herself and that's why they they meet out the violence to the other person mm -hmm. Mm. all right that's an interesting view to look at it we'll be looking deeper into that but first the numbers are up Mm. Uh, this season of COVID-19, <laughs> I mean, just what ails the family set up? What is this thing that was not known that COVID has brought to the fore? Yeah, according to World Health Organization, mm -hmm. the number rose to about 2 million women and 800,000 men. Yeah. So you can imagine yes. that about 200, two, 2 million women were battered. Yes. It is called intimate violence mm. because this is by people you are intimate to True. and 800,000 men so you can see also the number of men uh, they taught the best yes. to butter them and now they are buttering back right. so and that's not the case what COVID did it brought the man back home earlier okay then he used to go mm -hmm. and it kept him longer with the wife than before mm -hmm. is that not supposed to be a good thing <laughs> It's supposed to, but in a relationship where the, uh, the marriage was not healthy in the first place, okay. uh, it's like it, it brought in two things. Number one, you've got so much time with this person, you're able to see all their faults. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell women, if you want to stay for long with your, uh, let's say, house manager, 
give her time while she's working. Uh -huh. Come while everything is prepared. Don't be there through telling her, no, oh, she go heavy, kwanza iron, then do. No, 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 let her organize herself. Because okay. you'll feel like you want to take over. And a lot of that began to happen. And the men began to uh, wonder, how come at this time this has not happened? You know, women, we have a way we organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. It started from very minor issues. Oh, hold it right there. And I'm sorry, I am bringing this example here. Uh, Oh, I think I've seen you for the longest of time, yes. you know, numerous occasions, and yes. not just because of the stat thing or you coming, you know, to talk to the people or the viewer back at home. And I think it's only once that I have seen Dr. Jane alone. <laughs> only yes. once. <laughs> Now, I don't for many know. years, I yeah. think we're talking of almost over 10 years. Yes. Mm. yes. Uh, I think it's also a, a choice we made. Okay. It's a choice we made. And this is what we wish that the couples would go back to. Mm -hmm. Where they, they, they're friends. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Where they're friends. And so a lot of couples are not friends. Let's just go with that. All right. They're not friends. Mm -hmm. Now, while Zoyana, you know, it's like, okay, there is... And let me, let me talk a lot about women at this point. Okay. The man felt disrespected. And am I saying it says to butter a woman? It's right. No. You should never butter a woman. Mm -hmm. Neither should you butter a man. But most men complain because there's a point at which you are called to a police station. A certain police station. We used to go and sit and sort out issues on domestic violence okay. during the COVID period. Yeah, there. yeah. The police told us come and help us because we need <laughs> counsel. Yeah. And so we'd sit with them. And most men were saying, this woman does not respect me, does not recognize that I'm in the house, and I'm feeling demeaned, and I want to establish my authority. Wrong way to go. But that's the way they were taking. Mm -hmm. The other thing, we're dealing with most spouses, especially men, who had lost their job or had a salary cut. Okay. And as uh, Dr. Terry said, most of them would feel like I'm not the man I used to be. And perhaps they don't recognize me as a man because I'm not working. And you know, for us women, somehow we'll get something to do. Right. And so they'll feel like, you know, if it, was, if it was me working then, I would have been getting my respect. Mm -hmm. There is no more communication. There is no honor. Suddenly violence breaks out of silent communication. How do we handle that? Okay, silent communication. But then how do we handle these pressures of life? Because, mm. well, uh, then I don't understand how the pressures of life would equate to what it is that you've probably gone through in life, mm. that you'd get to a point of battering a woman or vice versa. Mm. So if you met with the troubles of life, how do you handle them such that they would not come in handy to affect what it is that you have as a relationship with the people that you love at the home setup? You, you see what happens, uh, Linda? The, the challenges that come, if you see people who are uh, meeting out violence on others, one, they have issues with themselves. Okay. And most, most, at, at most times, it is about control. It's about having that other person either in their mind submitting because they think the person is not submitting, or they themselves, they feel a level of inferiority, so they want to bring down the person to the level they are. So that is why you'll find somebody will, uh, will beat a, a wife or will beat a, a husband because they want to put them in the level where they feel they themselves are. Because in their mentality, they think maybe the wife is there. So when this guy loses a job, he suddenly feels like I have moved from the top position to a lower position and my wife is higher. So the only way I can bring her to where I am is by abusing her physically or verbally abusing her or denying some things. And I think the, the, the most important thing is for the person who is uh, abusing others to realize they, are, they have issues with their complexity. Yeah. They have inferiority complex, they have low self-esteem. That has not come because of the woman or the wife that is there. It is because of they themselves, the way they have handled life. And so they need to look for a solution on how to heal from that level of inferiority complex. Now, the people who are being abused also need to understand that they're dealing with somebody who is mentally disturbed. Okay. Now, you find somebody provoking this man who is already angry because he has lost a job, who is already feeling that he's low there, then you're telling him, we're nigonge. Now, you're actually helping him to do what he actually wants to do. <laughs> so it, is, it, it takes one person to realize that if this person is mentally unstable, then I will deal with this person 
more careful. Okay. You are dealing like you're dealing with a wild animal. You can't deal with a wild animal by, by being wild yourself. Probably you have to be calm in a way where they sense that you're in control. But to what level should it be? And I'm glad that this is coming, you know, after we are discussing the fact that, yeah, there are pressures of life that would come on board. Mm. But I've met women who have been under that pressure of doing that, you know, he's a hot-tempered man. So throughout your life, you <laughs> are living careful and cautious and, you know, keen not to annoy this person. And sometimes it can really be, you know, hectic mm -hmm. and tiresome. Honestly. Why does it have to get to that point? Yeah, yeah. Let me say this, uh, Linda. For most of those, because I've interacted with them, they faced it while they were dating. Okay. Most of them were either slapped, kicked, punched, while they were dating with the same person. Mm -hmm. And they thought it's okay because it's a learned behavior, because they saw their dad beating their mom. Okay. And at the mom saying it's okay because I love him or he loves me. Mm -hmm. And we, as children, while growing, we learn by copying what we say. Mm -hmm. So most people who grow up in violent homes, especially ladies, accept that that's the only way it can be. And some, uh, uh, some places they believe it's a show of love. Okay. If you did not beat me at all and... I'm not behaving well, then he didn't love me. But you see what? That is a land, that's a land thought. Yeah. The, the school of thought is warped. You learn that from growing up, and they learned it from their grandparents, so it's passed down the line. And that's why I tell somebody, it has to stop somewhere. Okay. It just has to break. But wait a minute. If it is character and healthy, and I mean, let's talk about that. The fact that, yes, there's someone who's probably experienced it, you know, on the early stages. There's someone who's never experienced it, but two, three, four, five down the line, a slap comes your way. And there's one who probably has been experiencing it all the entire time, and then boom, all of a sudden, violence is no more. What, what just happens within this, you know, and what is with these characters? If we're talking about a scenario about, you know, this is an individual and that is just them. If this is a violent person, they're just violent all through. They can slap you once, you know, after five years and, and probably you would say, well, they're not violent. No, They've it never should been. not be allowed. Okay. Not even. And that's why I tell women, you know, the, the mindset that a lot of our African, let me use bracket Kenyan mm -hmm. women have mm -hmm. had, is that if I leave this man, who will take care of me? I don't have a place to go to. And most of them then would cite the fact that perhaps they don't have a job, they are not educated, who will educate my children. They look at violence, and because of the financial constraint, they carry the brand for violence. Is it justified to say that uh, now these women who have been empowered have mm -hmm. their money and everything now, they are becoming something else, knowing very well that they can actually take care of them and, uh, of themselves. And uh, true to it, most of them who divorce or step out are those ones who are capable of taking true, care of them. True, true. You, you see so, what happens, eh? Part of domestic violence, what causes it, you may find the level of education. Somebody will tolerate uh, a, an abusive spouse mm -hmm. simply because they don't have enough education. So they feel like if I step out, then I will not get the opportunities that I'm getting from this person. So they, they tend to stay in simply because there are benefits that are coming in financial. In otherwise, if they stepped out, they would not be able to get. So, and that's why you find when probably this woman becomes empowered financially, the first thing they think it is stepping out. Mm -hmm. But we need to look at, you see, one thing, we need to, to look at the, the core, the root cause of everything, because as the as doctor said, eh, most of the times we tolerate it. You find somebody has slapped you the first time, and you never did anything. In fact, they, they realized by the time they slapped you, you began to behave well. <laughs> now you are no longer shouting the way you used to shout. So they realized, oh, this is a way. If, if she ever shouts at me, then I will, I will slap this person. Or on the other hand, if you are a lady, and probably you are the one who is battering your husband because he doesn't have a job. And uh, so this guy realizes, the woman realizes, that if I, I do this to this man, he stops being violent or he stops saying the things he says. So you find it becomes a way of doing things. You learn that this is the way to, to do it again and again. Mm -hmm. So unless we, from the beginning, say no, and you also don't just say no, but say if you, if you do this, then I will report this either to an authority 
or I will talk to your parents because there are people who are scared of hearing that their mothers will be told or their fathers will be told. And if it ever happens and you take that step and say, now that you have done it, then I will report this. The person will take you seriously. Have you ever heard some people say that, you know, there are women who attract violent men and the other way around. You know, there are men who attract, you know, like the first relationship, there's a slap. The second one, there's a slap. The fourth, the third one, there's a slap. Until you feel like, you know, the, if the fourth one is going to have a slap, then I'll have to settle because now people will start it thinking that I am the problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is there. No, it is slapable yeah. people. Uh -huh. eh? They are slapable people. Yes. You know what happens, eh? We, we usually say when somebody has gone through emotional and physical mm. abuse, they begin to lose value for themselves. Okay. True. As low self-esteem enters into their heart, and therefore they look like, I am not valuable. Mm -hmm. So anyone who will accept me, even if they slap me less than the one who slapped me before, <laughs> then they are better for me. Yes. And that is what happens. And that's okay. why we say it is so important to have, uh, if you have gone through violence, to look for a counselor who can sit down with you, and they may be able to identify the things that are going through you. Because the other people who probably they have one or two, three children, and they have been told you'll never be married because you have three kids. Mm. And so if they find a man who is slapping them very mm. well mm. and mm. later mm. providing also very well, they are like, yeah. you know, I'll never okay. be married, so I would settle with this. So that is one thing that causes people to remain in violent relationship because of low self-worth. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. uh, Dr. Chari has brought us to a point where we should have started from, you know, talking of the causes. He speaks of education. He, we speak of uh, poverty levels, esteem, and all that. What are some of these things that would get you to that point? You know, low self-esteem out of the experiences that you've had, that you need to stay alert and walk and understand that if this is the direction I will take, then I'm afraid I'll land myself in, you know, bad hands. Yeah, number one, you need to define your relationship. And I tell people when they come for counseling, it's yeah. important to define because most of these people uh, are in a relationship that we define as martyr relationship. Okay. In a martyr relationship, you're ready to die to be married. So you die to yourself, you die to your values, you die to your everything because the community believes at your age you should be married and the influence of the people around you is that you should be married. Mm. Number two, uh, because the person who is violent, however, also has a lot of plus in the society. Okay. And so the parents, your parents, keep pushing you because that family is wealthy or that man is well learned or he drives a car. And in the village, how many are doing so? So they kind of like push you towards it, mm -hmm. and you find yourself a victim of fate. And also, when we believe that whatever comes to us, quote, and quote, is God's will. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that's another one. Yeah, because that's, that's a religious belief that I don't agree with. And they tell you God hates divorce? And they quote the Bible? I agree, and God hates divorce, and I agree with them on that. Mm -hmm. But not everything that happens in that marriage is God's will. And some people will sit there and say, you know, he began to get violent. And so that caliber of people feel like I deserve it. Because their self-esteem has been beaten down. So they constantly feel like, like you know, if I did this, it would not have been violent. Actually, the other way also, the flip side for the men. They say, perhaps if I work harder, and I buy my wife uh, perhaps a Christmas dress or something, she, she will not butter me because there are men who are really getting buttered. Mm -hmm. And we're having women who are very strong. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I want to support that? <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> we can <mess. laughs> uh -huh. women. Yeah, and so what is gym. happening? <laughs> they go to the gym, yeah. You know, some of those women saw their mothers being beaten. Yeah. And now they went on the flip side to the extreme, where anything small for them is a, is a protection. It's a wall. You try to talk to me loudly, she slaps back, because she's afraid of seeing what the mother, uh, mothers yeah. went through. Yeah. All that is wrong. I think there is, it is an emotional sickness, mm -hmm. emotional instability. So one other reason to, to put that in a nutshell mm -hmm. is emotional instability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who are emotionally not well, 
we are having people who are sick, emotional ICU, and they end up dating somebody who is also in emotional ICU. Okay. By the time they realize they are both unwell, they've been wounded along the path of life, and they never got time to heal, they begin to bleed on each other. Mm -hmm. And when they begin to bleed on each other, that's why you find cases of violence, murder, rape, and all that happens. And just curious, before we come to you, Dr. Ari, mm. at what point do you say enough is enough? When it happens once, <laughs> or twice, or thrice? Remember, no. you're also trying to keep this marriage. I agree, I agree. But I believe, Linda, keeping the marriage is not at the expense of my body. Because if my parents stopped beating me while I was in lower primary, right. and would sit and talk, who tells you, you, know, you should come and teach me how to talk by the cane? You get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, because if I keep telling men, if you knew what one slap does to the inside of a woman, not the outside, mm -hmm. the outside may have not even a scar, but to the inside and to that marriage and to that relationship, they constantly see you as an animal. Do things ever change? It if would it take happens once. Once or twice. Let me go to the first question. When should it be too much? When you yes. see a person doing it and the person wants to do it again, have flee for your life. Okay. There are many people who are buried today who if they had been told before or are invalids, who if they stopped at the first one would be alive today. Mm -hmm. So I say after the first one, the second one, begin to look at ways, as Dr. Terry said, look for intervention. Okay. Don't call it quits, look for intervention. Look for a counselor, look perhaps, you, you know at times if you talk to the parents, you're giving them more stress. So look for an external person, a religious person, a counselor, or somebody who can step in externally on the second one and see if something will be sorted out. But if beyond that, if it persists, you know, adverts used to say, Maumivu ya kizidi mwona daktari. So here Maumivu ya kizidi, at times the daktari is a bit of separation. Yes. For the sake of your life. Okay, well, mm. let's go back a bit lower. Mm -hmm. I speak to the parents, speak to the dads out there. How is it like witnessing family violence for a child? <laughs> wow. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I would have no words to express it, but I think it is one of the, the worst things because for children they look at a family as a place of safety mm -hmm. so when they see a man beating his wife or a woman on the other hand maybe beating the husband or a, even uh, verbally abusing each other now they, their sense of security disappears through the window and the next thing they have questions, where do I go? And that's why you find when there is physical violence in home, the natural tendency for most children is to run away. Mm. They usually either will go to a bedroom and maybe get into the bed and go to the place at a corner because they are like, this is not a safe place to be. The next thing, either they will get out and maybe stay for very long. And that's why you have some, in some families, children, they saw violence, saw violence. Later there was peace. But because when they were young, they used to run away, even up to today, they still don't come back. True. I usually say this to any man, to any woman. It is a sad thing for you to raise your hand or even physically or verbally begin a battle when your children are there because you are destroying their inside, you are destroying their self-confidence, and they look at you and they are afraid of you because they don't know whether you can offer them the same security because children look at parents as a source of security. Mm -hmm. So one must take all caution not to be violent in front of the children. Number two, you introduce violence to them. Because a boy will look and say, I wish I can fight my dad. So a time comes, and probably when they are older, you may say something, and that's why you see some of these cases you are seeing a man has been killed by a son. Mm -hmm. It did not just begin. It's not they were, that it began the particular day. Probably this man used to be so violent and this boy was waiting for one time and he didn't know that he would end up killing the father. Mm -hmm. So violence is injected to that child and it may never get out and it may explode on somebody else somewhere or on the same whatever. Mm -hmm. On the number three thing that happened, it is, there is, is what we call dishonor. Now, as a pastor, I would say, when dishonor enters a child, you have also released a curse on that child. Okay. 
Because when the word of God says that honor your father and mother that it may be well with you, that means there are things that will not go well with you in life. Child, okay. There will be a short because this child learns one thing. I cannot respect men. I cannot respect women. So that child goes to school. Unaskia mejibu mwalimu vibaya. Kosabu kwake, you are just another person. Mm. There is no honor. Mm -hmm. So you, when you do that, you are doing so much damage to your child. And you must avoid it at all costs. Uh -huh. You mm. speak of safe space. And mm. uh, the home has, for the longest of time, been seen as the safe space mm. for men who say, you know, you're always told as a woman, allowing that time to go, uh, to come and shed off the troubles of the day yeah, and, you know, true, relax. And true. women, too, have looked at men as their security, the home yeah. as a safe space. But a report, again, came out the other day speaking of the fact that the homes are no longer safe spaces. Mm. for Absolutely. the girl child, for mm. the women. What does it speak of this society and just how do we get ourselves from that scenario? It is no longer a safe space for the, uh, the child again because when they start developing such courtesy of what it is that they have witnessed then we clearly are telling them that school is better and in most cases they have looked at school as a better mm. deal. It's just that their rules are sometimes, mm. you know, yeah. limit them. Yeah, I say this, uh, uh, the number one source of comfort in every home, and this one comes back to the woman. The <clears throat> number one source of comfort in every home is a woman. Okay. It is a woman. But what is happening? Because it doesn't matter. Uh, you may find a home where Mze is a drunkard, mm -hmm. but mom is around, she's warm, she's happy. Children are always around that house. And she creates memories. Because children will always come back home to memories. They don't come to nothing. Mm -hmm. They come back to memories. You know those moments, perhaps we are making mandazi, the moments we are washing clothes together. And I go back to this, and these one women, we cannot run away from it. Every woman has been skilled by God to, do her, to build her own home. It doesn't matter how bad it is. Somehow, somewhere, there is something a woman, a wise woman would have done. And I think we need now to teach women about wisdom for living. Mm -hmm. There is something a wise woman would have done because the good book also tells me that a wise woman builds her own home with her own hands. That means there is a skill to tame a man. There is a skill to tame an environment because women are climate controllers. Mm -hmm. And therefore I keep saying this, if it gets to a point that it is not safe for you as a woman, Either you're in the wrong place, completely wrong, you missed it from the basics, mm -hmm. or there is something you're not doing according to the skills in you. Right. And one of the things women are doing these days which is very wrong is revenge. I keep telling women, don't revenge on a man. Be skillful in molding this person, because they are moldable. Women have got an ability to mold even their crazy sons because it's a gift, even in you, Linda. Okay. You know, somehow, how, you know, this one, Nikki Mongela Shaivi, when I serve this food like this, when I do this, every creature, including animals, they are gravitated towards love, they gravitate towards honor, they gravitate towards respect. So when you know what it means, to give your husband or your children comfort. Because every man marries for comfort zone. You create your own environment. Mm. And so we cannot keep running away as women because men can never make a home. Mm. By the way, they cannot. They just build houses. Mm -hmm. They can never make a home. Right. So I think we also now need to sit back, ask ourselves, is a company I'm keeping helping me to make a home? Because some of them sit around, hang around with people who tell them, and that is not the truth. They go home, they are very meek. Wait, create time for your children. Cut off time with your phone. Because at times you are so on phone. I have observed it of late. You find a lady has gone out with her children for lunch, but she's on social media. Mm. The children are trying to grab her attention. She is there but not present. She's laughing with invisible people. And I think as women, you've got to be purposeful par parents, mm -hmm. purposeful homemakers. Where you get to the house and you create the home environment, create the climate, have your time for your friends and everything. But when you go home, no, it's your divine mandate 
your divine responsibility, and when you do it well, you get the reward. All right. Uh, mm. Let's talk about the first slap and the damage that it could have. Yes. And how then one can get themselves back to a point where they realize that I'm a woman after all. Mm. And so if I have decided to stay after that one slap, mm. then it's still incumbent upon me to fix this home. Because sometimes we're emotional beings and we're carried with these emotions. And every other time it comes back into your head that actually yeah. you slapped me. And you keep reminding this person, no, you need me slap by the way. Mm. And so at that point, everything goes haywire. <laughs> because you cannot fix what it is that Dr. Jen speaks about. So mm. how do you get yourself into that Point in the event that you decide it's okay he did it once and he said sorry and he seems like he's indeed apologetic and so as the woman I have to go back to that point where I will forgive them in totality mm -hmm. and I will focus on building this home I think uh, as a uh, as dr. Jenna said it is possible to to build relationships even from point of brokenness mm -hmm. but I will say this and, and, and this I will I'll direct to to the ladies Sometimes they forget that your words as a woman are sometimes worse than slaps. For a man, you say something, you call him useless, you compare him and you say, Babanani does this, that will hit him harder than any slap that may be given on the outside. Mm -hmm. In fact, you'd rather prefer to be hit on the face than to hear those words. And also, I, I, I'll still come, and also the aspect of challenging. You know, a man is created with an instinct to protect, mm -hmm. an instinct to fight. So when you challenge this man and you begin to say, hit me, hit me, you are provoking something that you may not be able to deal with after that. And most men regret after they, they slap the, the, their wives or whatever, they do regret. And I do not condone at all any physical violence okay. by men. But now for the woman, one, learn so seriously to control what you say with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Because that will determine how a situation will change. It is good to know that a soft word can calm any situation. Be a woman that changes and agrees that I will become in every situation. Number two, after he has done that, then you need to sit with him down and tell him, we are building this relationship, but this is not ever again acceptable. Okay. Because somebody will know when you have said it's a no-no. You know, there are people who say no. You know, it's like relationships when you are, maybe you are dating, you're trying mm. to date, and you're telling that you're guy, hey, yes. this moment. And you can say she's saying no, but she's saying yes. Mm. Now, their ladies will be like, you have slapped me, but uh, never slap me again. But deep inside, you're still not serious about what you're saying. Okay. I think women need to put it out to the men that are probably physically violent that this is not acceptable. I will not tolerate this. And it can either cause us to separate or cause me to take an action where I'll go to the police call because men don't like shame. Okay. So, and, and be serious about that. And when you do that as a woman and you say this thing is not acceptable and I will take one, two, three steps, if this ever happens again, then he will listen and you will find it may not ever happen again. And are there places to report in the first place? And I mean, is help <laughs> at all disposal? Like, honestly speaking, you go to the policemen, you tell them that, and they start laughing at you. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you just ask yeah. yourself, is there a place you can go to report this? And to who, actually? That's a question. Now, number one, let me fight for the man. Mm -hmm. When it comes to gender violence and the man has been battered, you can imagine a whole big man coming to cry yeah. to the police, to that young girl who's writing at the OB. And so I believe uh, one thing we need to have is compassionate. Mm. I, I think a department of compassion. Mm. I think the police also need a department that can be is trained, well equipped to deal with domestic matters. True. That is compassionate about issues happening. Because a lot of people who are injured in families had reported. Mm, true. They had talked to somebody, mm -hmm. either to the chief, Nyumbakumi Initiative, wherever, but nobody took action. Because mm -hmm. when it is a woman, people think, you, oh, the kosea. Yes. Acha kum kosea. Yeah. Simple. Mm. Perhaps really? the man is on drugs. Dr yeah. I did nothing wrong. He just came with his influence. So, nilim kosea 
So I feel a lot of these things, these issues are not well treated. Mm. And we need, if the government would help, is to give, if it's a police department, it can work alongside, like we did during the COVID, with our professional counselors who can volunteer yeah. so that when there are such cases, they can handle them for them before they tell the man, wewe ni mtoto unachapo na bibi. And then bibi mwenye anatokea kana tosha na hivi. Na mzee anatosha na hivi, but he's gentle at heart. Yes. Mm. He may be strong, but he's gentle at heart. Mm -hmm. So I believe that shame, most people don't want it. Again, you may go to report to your, perhaps your chief, mm -hmm. then it is news bulletin all over the village, right. all over your estate. Mm -hmm. So I believe we need a department with compassion mm -hmm. and with understanding on the matter's family. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. So let's speak gender. In this case, women have exp uh, who probably have experienced uh, domestic violence or abuse, you know, at a significantly higher risk, or are I at a significantly higher risk of one of girl uh, experiencing range of uh, mental yeah. conditions, mm. uh, you know, uh, post-traumatic stress, uh, depression, anxiety, yeah. substance abuse, and we've seen these cases outright, you know. Some of them have gotten to a point where they have thought of suicide and yeah. all these things. Mm. How can they handle such and live a normal life? Mm. And is there a difference in the case of men mm. after having experienced violence, uh, domestic one, violence? One thing that happens when, when it comes to domestic violence is any person who is going through domestic violence need to look for help. And you need to look for help in the right places. Identify people who can understand you. If you're a woman, look for another woman who will be able to listen to you, not even, even probably help you on anything, but just listen to you, that you can be able to talk to them. If you're a man, you need to identify another man. I have had men who we have sat together, and they will come and tell you, Pastor, I'm being, this is what is happening. Yeah. And because they have found confidence in you, they are able to find healing. But unfortunately, when it comes to the men's world, you go and you tell another man that you are, you are being beaten. Of <laughs> course, just like you are saying, most of them probably will laugh mm. or they will, they will even tell you where, where you are just a coward. Mm. And so they don't help. So I would say, number one, identify people that you can talk to because that is the beginning part. Now, the second thing, you also need to, to, to find, you know, there's a lot of help in books. One thing I've discovered is that we don't read a lot. And there is a book that you can read and you find a lot of solutions therein. Mm -hmm. okay. So I would also encourage people to, to read a lot because that, that, that mm -hmm. will really help. Now, when it comes to the other side of the, of the women, I think they have been the ones who have gone through violence more than any, anybody else. It is important to, to realize and to come to a place where if you are being abused, because you are more educated. You know there are men who will beat yeah. their wives because they are earning better and they are doing well. You need to reach a place where you can be able to say, I can separate because that is even an option that is even given biblically, that you can separate from your husband, then find a solution. Yeah. And don't go back to this person unless you have gone through a counseling process. True. Because one guy will come, I'll never beat you again. And so yeah. you find a lady picking her bags, and I'm she goes back. back to the same home, but they never solved the foundational issues. So I always say, if before going back to that home where there was violence, look for a professional What is counselor. the worst that can happen if you do not solve these issues, underlying issues? Yeah. And sometimes you go there, and actually, I've had mm, friends of yeah. mine speak of a scenario where he's living his life, mm. I'm living mine, and that's it. Mm. He is not questioning me yeah. on anything, I'm not questioning them on anything, and that's it. Just how healthy or unhealthy it is isn't. It, it, is it, it is not healthy. It is not. There is a point at which you feel like, uh, to be very, very honest, this man has been violent and is violent again. There is a point at which you say it's not a must to remain married to the same man. Mm -hmm. As much as yes, we are pastors, we also have to take care of you to be alive forever mm -hmm. until the time comes when the maker will take you. And you're also concerned about your emotional well-being. We are co uh, every, I mean, the, the, the society mm -hmm. is concerned that you, go, you met this man when you are whole. You need to live whole and to improve. But if today he hits you, tomorrow he punches you, you have had counseling, you have looked for intervention, and then the following day he threatens you. And most of them keep saying this, and I've heard that a lot. 
Siku moja nitakuua. Mm. I've had that a lot. Siku moja mimi nitakuua. And when a man tells you that, kindly can you just pack and go? Because this would Because when a man is saying that it's already premeditated. He's meditating on something. He's just a, it's a slip of the tongue from the subconscious. It's something that's been mingled with his brain. Siku moja nitakuua. Why? Because perhaps he wants to get rid of you and get somebody else. Mm. Okay, well, that's an interesting one. Which is worse as we get to a close? Mm. Emotional abuse, physical abuse. Which one, which one has, you know, I don't want to call them ramifications, but has more effects, negative effects for that matter? You know, the, the, what I would say, emotional abuse, the, 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 the sad part about it, you may not even know that it is happening. Okay. You know, you'll find men who are denying food in their homes. And so that is still emotional. Maybe the wife will come, will give the children all the food, and he will not be served. Mm. So that person is left emotionally battered. But physically, when he steps out there, you'll not see anything. You may find, especially like this time of corona when men were not working, you find financial, he is not able financially. So the woman who has finances refuses to assist him in anything. Mm. Even if it is bus fare, probably in the bus, you are, the lady is the one who is paying and she's making sure she's saying, ule, ule mzei kwa pale, you know. <laughs> so the person has got nothing to say. <laughs> but, oh, yeah? you know, the, the person is emotionally <laughs> wounded, yes. but he can do nothing. He doesn't have the money. Mm. So it goes deeper because it may not be seen physically. Mm. And also there are women who have been called names they have been denied food. Mm -hmm. They have been told you cannot see so and so. That is also emotional. They are never beaten, but they are told you cannot go to this chama. If I see you talking to this woman, if I see you standing with this man outside, you will see me. They are never beaten, mm -hmm. but they forever live in isolation because of the words they, are, they hear from their men. I say emotional abuse okay. is worse more than the physical abuse. Oh, okay. And so there's a way one can get out of that. I wish we'd have this conversation some more, but time is not on our side. In 30 seconds, how do you realize that this is actually emotional abuse and do you step out? When you realize you're constantly not happy, look for joy within you. Okay. Look for what makes you happy. Create your own environment. Be whole. Because so many times you depend on our own partners, on the other partner to make you whole. No, be whole yourself. People are attracted to whole people. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. So that's more like it. I think there's no better way of winding it up as uh, I mean, opposed to actually picking that particular point that has been raised by Dr. Jane. And I think I agree to that. You know, I, for a moment I just got myself thinking, actually, you know, those moments when you feel like you're not whole, Nobody is attracted to you, and those moments when you get to, you know, to your senses and you say, well, this is Linda and this is it, good things come your way. Yeah, true, Good things true, do come true, your way, true. so it's incumbent upon you. Speak out, uh, step out if it is not working right. You are your sole security caregiver, yeah. mm -hmm. and so it is incumbent upon you to ensure that you guarantee yourself that. That's why we get to wind up this conversation. So we look forward to more and more conversations in matters, you know, life and uh, family setup. There's so much that has come in in terms of feedback, but because of time, we won't be able to go through that. It was good having you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jen. Thank you so much, Dr.